been working too hard today. What seems to be the problem? I think I'm having a heart attack. What's your name, sir? Jerry. Jerry, why don't you tell me what's going on? Uh, I was just stacking. Uh, he was stuck in the canoes. He doubled uh, over, and I had my co-counselor call my mom. Uh, Jerry! <laughs> no pulse. He's not breathing. Start CPR while I secure his airway. You know CPR? Yeah. Okay. I want you to take over chest compressions while Marcus operates the BBM, okay? What's a BBM? It stands for a bag valve mask. It's used for when we need to breathe, okay? Okay. Come on, Jerry. Come on, Jerry. Okay, stop compressions while I see what his heart's doing. He's in deep field. Stand by to defibrillate. Everybody stand clear. I'm clear, you're clear, we're all clear. Shock. Still no pulse. All right, stand clear, I'm going to defibrillate again. You're clear, I'm clear, everyone's clear. Shock. <laughs> He has a pulse. It's weak, but he's got a pulse. Let's get him onto a backboard, then onto the cot. When we roll him over, I want you to push that board up, okay? I've got his head. Okay. One, two, three. All right, push him back. Call, does he have any family nearby? Uh, my co-counselor called his son, but I don't think she got a hold of him. Okay. How old is he? I think he's 70. Is he going to be okay? He has a heartbeat, so there's a chance. We need to get him to emergency fast. Ready? One, two, three. Dispatch, this is Mission 10. I have a male approximately 70 years old. He had a full cardiac arrest while stacking canoes at camp. Uh, we were able to resuscitate him using a defibrillator. He is unconscious, but still breathing. We're on our way. Seventy-year-old Jerry, who was working at Camp Oakwood, stacking some canoes. Some chest pain brought him to his knees. Uh, initially awake on our arrival, he started rapidly going into a V-fib arrest. We gave him CPR and two stack shocks, uh, produced a pulse. Twelve lead EKG and route shows a posterior MI. We were able to establish the line and start a lidocaine drip. Ready? One, two, three. <clears throat> Patient's been unconscious since arrest. We started hypothermia protocol. Uh, we got wet towels and ice packs on him. Vital signs, his uh, BP is 60, palpated, his heart rate 40 irregular, uh, he is intubated, and oxygen saturation is 97% by VBM for us. Uh, no history or allergies are we're aware of. Are you the daughter? No, I'm his friend. I work with him at camp. Is he going to be okay? We're going to do everything we can for him. His heart rate is too slow. We need to administer atropine to get his heart rate up. Okay, guys, looking at the monitor, he's in a code STEMI VPIB post arrest. Right. Alert the cath lab and cardiology and get hypothermia protocol ready to go. Uh, Juxtal rhythm at 48 looks like some posterior and inferior damage uh, in V1, 3, and V2. Okay, the first thing we need to do is make it easier on his heart right now. If we thin his blood out some, it'll make it easier for his heart to function. Let's get Heber and Gorn to start thinning his blood. If we get his body temperature down far enough, we can get his brain to focus on the blood flow just on his core and not worry about pumping blood to his extremities. That should keep him alive. I want his temperature down to 92 degrees. Let's get him a cooling blanket. I'm going to get a central line in his chest. Cat lab's ready. All right, people, let's move. What's happening? They're going to take him to cardiology, to the cath lab. That's where they're going to really be able to help him the most. She said something about a code STEMI and a, a V-fib post-arrest. What does that mean? STEMI stands for ST Segment Elevation Myocardial Infarction. A code STEMI is talking about how his heartbeat looks on the monitor. Basically, it means he's had a heart attack. V-fib post-arrest means that his heart wasn't beating right. He's had a heart attack, and now he's on the other side of it, but he still needs a lot of help. Nicole, can you come with us? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Good luck. We need to determine what's wrong. It could be blockage, could be a coronary arterial spasm. Let's find out. 
inserting the cordis and sending the wire up the artery. Okay, and into Jerry's heart. All right, we need to see how his blood is flowing through the heart to see where the problem areas are. I'm injecting some dye into the bloodstream that we can follow through Jerry's heart and hopefully find our blockage areas. I see a vessel with blockage, Doctor. Yes, I see it too, and it looks like there's two of them. We need to remove those blockages and get those blood vessels to remain open. Should we perform an angioplasty? Yes, we're going to insert a tiny balloon and blow the vessel back open, and then we'll insert a stent that will act as a brace to keep the vessel from closing. Looks like Jerry might be okay. Let's hope so. Hey there, Jerry. Uh, what happened? Hi, Jerry. My name is Dr. Andrea Grayson. You suffered a myocardial infarction, or what you might know as a heart attack. When you felt that pain in your heart, it was because it was not getting enough oxygen and your heart tissue was damaged. You had two blood vessels in your heart with blockages, and we were able to go in and repair those. Well, Jerry, you're looking a lot better, and your heart beats back to normal. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You're gonna have a few weeks in cardiac rehab, Jerry. You're also going to have to develop a healthier diet and practice regular exercise. And you'll get plenty of that back at camp, Jerry. I guess I'm pretty lucky, huh? Yes, you are, Jerry, but you're gonna be okay. Thank you. You're welcome.